Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about one of the most beautiful moons in our solar system, Enceladus, the moon of Saturn. And we're going to talk about the discovery of how we believe the stripes of Enceladus were formed. Let's talk about this and welcome to What Math. Unlike other moons in our solar system, Enceladus really stands apart, mostly because of these unusual stripes that form on the surface as a result of some sort of an activity we didn't really understand before. Here's a composite shot taken by Cassini mission um, when it was still around Saturn, and this is what Enceladus really looks like if you were to look at it from space, from orbit. It has these beautiful but somewhat unusual looking blue stripes all across the surface and we didn't really know how to explain their formation or why other moons don't seem to have the same. You know, if you were to zoom in, you would even notice that there is almost like a pattern to them, as if something unusual caused them to form in the way that they formed. And it just so happens that we may have solved their mystery. But before we talk about this, let's compare Enceladus to some of the other moons. And specifically the bigger moons in the solar system because unlike Enceladus that's right here, you'll notice that other moons are much larger in size and obviously have a lot more mass. Even Saturn's own Titan is dramatically bigger than Enceladus. And if we were to try to visualize size difference here, as you can see Enceladus is basically really really tiny. Notice how neither one of these other moons, including the Ganymede that does have some stripes, but not the same types of stripes, have these unusual formations similar to what you see here. And size and mass is one of the possible answers to why we're not seeing this on other moons in the solar system. The closest we have is of course Europa, the moon of Jupiter, and here you will find certain stripes, but first of all they're not really blue, and second of all they're not actually formed in the same way, neither are they ordered similarly to the ones uh, on Enceladus. Here the stripes seem to be all over the place, they don't seem to have any predictable pattern, however, these stripes do have a pattern and only seem to be concentrated in the southern part of the moon. And all of these observations create a somewhat interesting story. So first of all, these stripes um, are more or less parallel. The distance between them is roughly around 35 kilometers on average. And at the same time, they all seem to possess very similar structure. The stripes on Europa are more or less hectic, they don't seem to have any pattern, and do not possess the same structure. On top of this, Enceladus has this really unusual feature we were able to witness with the Cassini mission. Let's use NASA's eyes um, on the solar system to try to discover what all of this looks like. So here, if we look at the um, moon of Enceladus, you'll notice that right there in the southern part where those unusual formations are, we also have these geysers. That's basically where we were able to find really large emissions of water and also organic material coming from within the moon. And all of this seems to uh, suggest to us that not only does Enceladus have liquid water on the inside, it's also extremely active and might even have conditions possibly friendly to life, alien life. This also produces one of the rings of Saturn, the E-ring is produced through these emissions, and this all together brings a very interesting and very unusual mystery. How did all of this form? And so, the scientists behind the paper that you can find it in the description below may have finally solved this mystery. So first of all, these stripes are definitely formed because of the tidal uh, interactions with Saturn and because of various gravitational interactions with both Saturn and the moons around Saturn. So here, similarly to how the uh, moon Io, the moon of Jupiter, seems to have volcanic eruptions because of the tidal interactions, same effects are able to produce not only the emissions on Enceladus, but also are responsible for cracking the ice here. And these cracks in the ice are essentially what's uh, forming these unusual stripes. But why is it only on the southern side? Well, according to the scientists, this was literally by accident. It could have been the northern side, but it's very likely that for some reason the southern side had slightly thinner ice, and so it cracked first, and since then all of the energy transfer has been occurring on that side. In other words, sometimes in the past, very likely right after the formation of the solar system, the ice here gave in and created these unusual formations. 
the northern side doesn't seem to be um, affected as much, probably because of the slightly different ice formation in the north, allowing it to be a little bit more stable. But what's interesting is the way that these stripes were formed and how they were generated in such an unusual shape. The scientists believe that all of this happened very methodically and started with one stripe specifically. The stripe they refer to as Baghdad Sulcus. All of the stripes here are named after places in the 1001 Nights, which are also known as the Arabian Nights, with the most popular story being the Aladdin. So that's why we have these names here. And once this crack formed, which was about 135 kilometers um, in length, it started to create a very interesting effect which I described in their paper in a little bit more detail. In a nutshell, once the first fracture appeared, it started to deposit a lot of ice on the sides, mostly because of these emissions that we're observing today as well. And these emissions created enough ice load here to create even more pressure on the ice close to the fracture. And eventually this literally caused the other sides of the fracture to snap and create more fractures. And eventually this caused these two fractures to also snap, creating their own eruptions and their own large formations. And because the deposits on both sides were more or less equal, that's why the distance here is also more or less equal to about 35 kilometers. And this obviously led to other eruptions and other formations of more fractures, eventually creating this beautiful surface, very unique in the solar system, that uh, we would not be able to find anywhere else. And one of the main reasons why it only happened on Enceladus is very likely because its mass and its size, obviously, are just not large enough to prevent the ice from collapsing in this way and also the water from escaping. If this moon, if this object was much larger, like for example size of Europa or Ganymede, it would not look the same way at all. It would more likely look like Europa or Ganymede. The fractures on which are very hectic, they don't seem to have any emissions and neither one of them have these beautiful geysers. So this is why we believe Enceladus is so unique. And also because of the materials we've seen coming out of those geysers, we believe today that it's very likely going to be one of the prime places for us to find alien bacterial life or possibly even more complex uh, extraterrestrial life. And in case you were wondering about the actual structure, so the ice here is several kilometers thick and then we believe that's where the liquid ocean is. And it also has a somewhat large rocky core where there's very likely a lot of um, underwater volcanic activity similar to what we have here on Earth as well. And at least here on Earth, these underwater uh, volcanic spots are usually some of the most prolific places to find life. Which is of course why we believe Enceladus might be hiding some life as well. But because there are no current missions being planned to go to Enceladus, we're probably not going to find out for the next few decades at least. Unless, of course, we somehow see an actual bacterial life being shot out of these vents and discover some unusual bacteria hiding in these E-rings of Saturn. It could happen, you never know. And so, just to summarize what we've learned from the study, first of all, so the stripes occurred in the south mostly as a kind of an accident, probably because the southern part was a little bit weaker. The formation of these stripes relates to the tidal effect and to the gravitational effects of Saturn and the moons nearby. And the reason they still exist and they look like this is actually mostly because um, Enceladus is just not massive enough to stop the formation of these stripes from occurring. In other words, it's kind of like having Saturn prevent the moon from healing its own wounds. And because the moon is so small, it's just unable to do so quickly, which is why the ice here never really gets to close um, completely and why we get these unusual water formations in between ice. And I guess the most interesting discovery here is why these stripes are so orderly. And the answer to that lies in the way that we think the first stripe caused the other stripes to form because of the loading of the ice once the first of these stripes started to produce enough geysers to fill the ice nearby. So overall it's a pretty interesting explanation and you can find out more about the study and also what the scientists learn about Enceladus from the paper in the description below. On that note that's all I want to mention. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. I'll see you tomorrow. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it helps me quite a lot. Space out and as always bye bye.